I came across the most beautiful piece of wood on Etsy called Payenma, or Asian satin wood. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but I'm going to keep calling it Payenma throughout this video. Since I was still in my chessboard mania phase, I decided to integrate this Payenma into a chessboard and accent it with a little bit of maple. I hope you like it, and welcome to Howdy's. I wanted to take a quick time out and celebrate reaching triple digits, baby. Thanks to my first hundred followers. I appreciate you. Okay, now back to work. As mentioned, this Payenma block was one of the most striking woods I've seen. It is pretty hard to find though, especially in a block large enough to get 32 squares out of it. Keep in mind, you have to cut enough to have 32 two by two inch squares with each one being roughly a half inch thick. For the build, I started out like normal with an MDF base and cut out a 16 by 16 section. I measured and marked off the two by two grid so that I could lay out my squares once they were cut. I then moved on to cutting the Payenma. Now I've read that Payenma is a hardwood, but this piece was extremely light and not very dense. And as you can see, it cut very easily, almost to the point that I would not recommend using it without stabilizing it for most projects. Since my pieces would be encased in resin, I did not see a concern here. And note that this piece may have been much less dense because as you can see, it's burled. Before I started cutting, I inspected the block and decided which part of the grain I wanted facing up. In this case, I wanted the top edge. So I cut three two by two pillars and used blue tape to connect them together with CA glue. I thought this would be the easiest and safest way to cut my squares, since larger pieces are, in my opinion, safer to run through the table saw, and you can keep your fingers further from the blade. I clamped a stop block on the right side of my table saw at a half inch so that I would be able to cut the half inch depth pieces. Now this meant that each cut, since I had three pillars glued together, would give me three squares. Note for those math challenge people and Aggies like me, a chessboard needs 64 total squares, 32 of each color. Since this channel is for learning, my fingers were way too close to the blade here, and I should have used something other than my fingers to move the squares away from the blade once they were cut. Okay, safety moment down. I finished cutting the Payenma, and I began to lay them out in the pattern I wanted checking for the best side to place face up. I then used Tight Bond 3 glue to cover the bottom of each square and carefully glued it to the MDF base. Note that you want solid glue coverage on the bottom of each piece to assure that there are no bubbles in the epoxy later. If the glue leaks out, do not worry because it will be covered in a half inch of epoxy. If you are using a darker epoxy color, then it will cover the brown MDF as well. In another effort to avoid epoxy bubbles, I sealed the Payenma with both a spray coat of shellac as well as painting on another layer to assure that the top and the sides of each piece were all well sealed. I then moved on to the next set of squares. For the alternating squares, I used another stop block and cut 32 pieces of hard maple. Again, each one being two by two and about a half inch thick. Actually, these were a little less than two by two. I actually cut them about 1.8 inches by 1.8 inches. That way I could put an accent epoxy color between them and create some variety on the top of the board. Again, safety moment. Although my fingers were further away from the table saw on these cuts, this is not the best practice to have your fingers that close to a saw blade. I should have used a piece of wood to hold the cut square while the blade was going through. Even a pencil with an eraser holding the cut pieces down would have been much safer than having my fingers that close. Back to the build. After cutting all the maple squares, I cleaned up the feathered edges with some hand sanding. Although this will be sanded away later when we run it through the drum sander, these feathers can again cause epoxy bubbles. So it's best to get rid of them now. I sealed each piece of the maple with shellac. But this time, I poured some shellac into a bowl and dipped the four, five, six sides, one, two, three, four, five, six, six sides of the square into the shellac. 
Once dry, I added a solid layer of wood glue to the bottom of each maple square and added it to the MDF base as well. At this point, you can really see the color of the wood and board starting to take shape. Quick note on the grain and the chessboard design. On a final chessboard, players sit on the side with the darker square to their bottom left. So as you are arranging the grain of the board, you will need to decide whether you want the grain running top to bottom or side to side. Now I've done both and you'll see both in some of my builds. On this particular board, the maple where you can see the most consistent grain runs from the top to the bottom. I think my final preference would be to have it run side to side, but again, that is up to you and your preference as the builder. I added the board into my chessboard mold and readied it for the epoxy pour. By the way, you can check out my video on how to build these chessboard molds, which if you decide to build some will save you lots of time in the build process. For the accent epoxy, I used a royal blue pigment from Rolio. Rolio is sold on Amazon if you're looking for it. I then added a little bit of black pigment in to darken it up just a little bit. After mixing it up, I poured the epoxy between the squares and along the edges of the board. And I used a weight to keep the board from floating in the epoxy. Believe it or not, even a heavy board will float up once you put enough liquid epoxy in there. It's best to weight it down to avoid giant bubbles from coming out the sides. Note that ideally, you want the epoxy to come up to and possibly just over the top piece of the highest wood. If the epoxy does not come up high enough, you will spend much longer sanding it down in the drum sanding process. And ultimately, the board will only be as thick as the lowest point of the epoxy, since you have to sand it flat. After the epoxy dried and hardened, I demolded the board and removed the silicone. Next was using the table saw and sled to clean up the edges of the board. Note that when I was cutting off the edge of the epoxy, it kept falling into the blade slot and catching the blade, causing my blade to completely stall out. Obviously, this is a safety issue and it's dangerous. I should have used either smaller cut passes so there were no actual physical sections of the epoxy to cut off, or instead of using it without the riving knife, I could have put the riving knife back on my table saw, which hopefully would have kept the cut off epoxy from falling down into the gap. I then ran the board through my drum sander multiple times, my super slow drum sander. As mentioned, I did not use enough epoxy, so it took a lot of time and many passes, even with 80 grit paper, to finally get to the point where the top of the board was flat. Once it was flat, it was time to start adding the edging. For the edging, I chose to use ash. I cut four strips of approximately one third inch thick, and then using CA glue and the accelerator, I added each strip to the edge of the board and then use my table saw and sled to trim the overhanging side of each piece of edging. I then use my random orbital sander to try and remove the lines created by the drum sander on the top of the board, and then use the same random orbital sander to smooth out the corners where the edging came together. I cleaned up the entire board with acetone and a shop rag and removed all the dust and debris. I then sealed the board with another round of shellac and as you can see here, the Pyenma really started to stand out. I really like the look of the Pyenma wood. Next was mixing up a batch of clear epoxy and pouring it over the board as a top coat. I usually run the epoxy along the sides and edging as well to assure that the shiny tone matches across the entirety of the top and sides of the board. I used a flame torch to pop any bubbles in the top coat as the resin dried. I sanded off the epoxy drips from the bottom and turned my attention to building the base. For the base, I chose matching hard maple with some figure so that the pyema would remain the highlighted piece of wood. I cut four pieces for the side of roughly 20 inches long, three quarter inch wide, and two inches tall. Because the chest pieces I make are about mm, a half inch wide, 
They will fit well into a two inch base, even with the chessboard sitting on top. I set my table saw blade to 45 degrees and cut the first angle into each of the four base sides, making sure that the best looking grain was on the outside. I used blue tape to mark the inside length for each of the base sides and then crept up making multiple small cuts until all the tape was removed. That meant I hit the point and the side should have been the correct length. I then cut a narrow gap into the lower part of each of the base sides, near where the bottom is going to sit. This is where the bottom of the base will be inserted and glued in. In the past, I've used eraser board, but I found some underlayment with a nice wood look and decided I would try those for this go round. I cut the groove to the width of this underlayment and cut the bottom to the correct size. I checked with the width of the board and the size of the square to assure that it was a good fit. I then cut four one inch pillars for the inside corners and glued up the base using clamps to hold all the pieces together. While the base was drying, I cut some narrow strips of walnut and ran them through the drum sander. These were gonna be used as spline joints to secure the base and add a little color accent. With an extra piece of plywood, I cut a groove which showed the exact width of my table saw blade. I used this groove to determine the width of my splines and tested the pieces after going through the drum sander. Once they were the correct width, I cut them into small squares to ready them to be used and inserted as the splines. I then used a jig I made to hold the chessboard bases 45 degrees so I could cut the grooves for the spline. I cut a one inch deep groove into each of the four corners of the base. I then added the spline with a generous amount of wood glue and clamped it into place to let it dry overnight. Once dry, I cut the excess off and used my random orbital sander to smooth the excess of each spline to be smooth with the base. Note. My table saw has angled blades, so when you run it through, it creates a V shape on the cut. Ideally, I would have used a table saw blade with a flat top, and that would have avoid creating any gaps between my spline and the gap created by my table saw. To finish up the project, I added a coat of shellac to the base so that it would match the chessboard top and then added felt and rubber feet to the bottom of the chessboard itself. These feet will sit on the pillars of the base. With the board being finished, I created two sets of opposing chess pieces, one in white and one matching the blue epoxy that was used in the highlights of the board. Here is the final piece. Overall, I think it came out great. I absolutely love the Pyenma wood. A couple of things that I might have done different are to pick a darker complementary wood to the Pyenma as opposed to the lighter colored maple, although some people really like the drastic difference. The other change might be to make all of the chest squares the same size and then leave a gap between all of them for the epoxy highlight. With the maple squares being slightly smaller, it does make a little bit of a zigzag design as you're looking between the light wood and the darker epoxy highlight. All that aside, I think it is an incredible board and I'm looking forward to the next build. Although I need to find a much less expensive highlight wood, Payenma, as I said, is not cheap. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and please like, comment, and subscribe if you learned something or if you didn't learn something. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.